Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nocturnal Gaming Network. My name is Zira, and today we are playing Space Flight Simulator. So, the last time we were together, we learned about Orbital Rendezvous, and we, you know, basically went through and we docked um, some ships together, and it was wonderful, and it worked great, and yeah, now we're going to actually use that skill for for something here. We're going to go through and we're going to build a multi-launch rocket that contains um, a lunar research satellite, communication satellite, uh, a lander, and a rover. Okay? And all of this is going to be vanilla. I'm going to, I think I mentioned this in the last video, I'm going to try to keep everything to do with my moon missions vanilla. That way people who have the um, base game without the upgrades can play along uh, and whatnot. Uh, the only thing is the, the size of the build screen. I'm not exactly sure how big the vanilla build screen is compared to this. So, you know, I'm I'm going to try to keep my rockets fairly small um, so we don't have any problems here. But I, I, if anything, I might make a little bit of a mistake on the build size. So, with that out of the way, let's actually begin building our rocket here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build the um, the top portion of the lander and the communication satellite. So we're going to throw a couple solar panels over here for future use. And we need a few of these. Uh, two, we need at least two. I think we're going to do three. That way we can control the rocket that's launching this thing too. Um, and the way we're going to connect these is we're going to use the docking ports. I'm going to use the large docking port that way, or the medium-sized docking port. That way it looks aesthetically better. But for those of you who have vanilla, you can use the small one. It'll do exactly the same thing. There's going to be no errors. So where I use a large docking port, just use a small one. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put that. We're going to put a little tank there. I suppose we should probably get a little bit of um, electrical stuff too. Let's get let's get two of these batteries. There we go. So now we can go back to our basic. Uh, we're going to put one of the probe cores here. And I think we're actually going to rotate this upside down because I think that'll orient our um, icon correctly in the future when we actually launch this thing. Oops, I need to flip that over. There we go. We'll put a couple of solar panels on it because this is going to be out in space and we want it to be able to actually have some power. We'll flip. We'll flip this over the battery, and then we can put a couple of these RCS thrusters on it. There we are. We're going to grab a separator. Now, this separator, uh, I think I've done this in another video, or actually, no, I, I don't think I have yet. I'm going to use the separator and call it a dish. So this is purely aesthetic here. It's so that when we separate this, we'll have both a dish on the communication module and on the lander itself. Okay, so, you know, that's why you face them towards each other, put the one space gap, that way it sort of looks like it's got something there. Um, next, we're going to begin construction of the landing phase here. And we need to grab these solar panels. We'll put them right on here, come, come on. Right there, like that. Uh, and then put the other battery down below this. And then finally, we'll put the docking hub. Yeah, that looks about right. Um, so, last thing we should do is put a couple of RCS thrusters on this thing. So we can, when we have the final docking module all set up, we're going to... Uh, hopefully, if I've 
<laughs> design this right, have a nice balanced amount of RCS thrusters, because when you see how we have to land the rover, you'll understand why. We're basically going to be flying this thing sideways at some point. Um, so we're going to put a couple spaces, put our uh, actual circularization stage here. Uh, let's do this, and then we can put another separator, and then put our second stage. Ooh, 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 I forgot a thruster here. That would have been bad. There we go. <laughs> so we got our, our payload. We have our third stage, our second stage, and we're going to do some boosters now. And those are going to be our first stage. So we'll do a double stack for the main boosters because this thing's getting sort of heavy here. 150, 166. Oh, and we don't have a fairing either. So we want to go and put a fairing on this. And we'll start with just the small fairing piece and then go to the slightly larger fairing piece. There we go. We can do one more here and narrow it down and close. Okay, so here is our first rocket that we're launching into space. Uh, let me just check my picture real quick and make sure I have everything. Yes, yes, this is everything. Okay, <laughs> that would be interesting if I launched it and didn't have everything, but whatever. Uh, so this is probably going to be a two-part video. Um, basically what we're going to do is the first one, this video, we're going to launch this one, launch the second of the two rockets, and then we're going to join them together in orbit. And then after that, the third video is going to be us launching, uh, no, not the third video, who, the second video is going to be us launching the third rocket and then actually heading towards the moon to do our research type stuff. So the first part of this video is complete. We've got our rocket, we're launching, we're rotating because it's 2,000 meters, and we're going to try and set this thing into orbit at about 50 kilometers. Uh, now, I've gone through and I've cleared the orbital rendezvous rocket out of here because, you know, it was a, it was a training aid. It, it's not junk that will be on our file here. We don't want it. It'll just get in the way, you know? Um, <laughs> so, we can, with this one, where it's a fairly heavy rocket as far as, like, thrust-to-weight ratio goes, we can just sort of turn it a little bit as we're going up. We're going to go to about 35 kilometers, because that's a nice, generally good number to go to when we want to get a total of 50. So we can just just wait for another second here, then we can time warp a little bit. Actually, I probably shouldn't time warp. I should probably start... Yeah, I'm going to time warp. Right about there, just, just out of the atmosphere, and then we'll start burning again. Boop. And we can get rid of that, do that, and then get rid of our fairing. And now we will begin the process of a circularizing. And the second stage is not quite going to do it as far as circularization goes. We're going to need a little bit out of the third stage, but that's okay. Because the third stage, it's primarily there to get us into the stable orbit and to provide assistance as far as um, actually um, docking these two modules together once we actually get them into space. Because once we... Once we go through and dock these, we aren't going to have this bottom portion with the with the probe core on it. Ooh. Okay, that's good. That's fine. <laughs> I was just looking at that going, wow, that's getting a little close there. But it's fine. We aren't causing any problems. Just going to keep... Keep checking in on this. We're going to wait until we're fairly close to the apoapsis, and then we're going to turn radial out. We're only going to need a little bit, because we're probably, what, 40, 
five seconds or so away from circularization here. So we just, just need to wait a little bit. We're getting up to the right velocity. We just don't quite have, um, you know, we aren't quite all the way there yet. We are getting close, because even though we're burning completely prograde here, we're not really gaining on our apoapsis, so that's good. There we go. Just a little bit more. And here we are, coming out the other side. We're going to have stable orbit in just a second. I'm actually going to slow my thrust down here, and we're just going to keep boosting until our apoapsis is at 50 kilometers. So, that brings us to 44.8 at our final periapsis, which is pretty good. Come on, you can do it. I have faith. There we are, 50 kilometers on the dot. We're going to preemptively rotate ourselves prograde here, just like always. Or often, I'll say. Not, not always. There we go. And then we can accelerate through time here. Let's go a little faster. Right about, right about there. Now we'll slow ourselves down, recenter the map, make final adjustments to our angle. There we go. So now we're right before the apoapsis. We're going to put a fairly low thrust on this thing. There we go. And we're just going to keep burning. 48, 49, 49.5. Let's go down to like 1% here. 7, 8. Alright, go down to... Maybe 0.1 is a little overkill. We're actually going to boost back to the apoapsis and re-angle ourselves prograde. There we go. Just to make sure that we don't influence our apoapsis at all. We not want a nice, perfect circular burn here. There we are. We are at basically exactly 50 kilometers. So we still have about a quarter tank left in this launch stage. So we're just going to leave it here. Uh, I suppose we could separate this and shoot the launch rocket back to the planet if we wanted, but uh, the problem with that is if you release control of this rocket, we're going to be burning the fuel from the actual rocket stage for the moon should something happen. So I always find it's best to wait until last minute to release the rocket stage no longer need. So we'll do that at that time. Uh, we're going to go back to build new. And this time we are going to do the rover. So because the fairings are what they are in this game, we're going to be building the rover sideways so that it's vanilla compatible. And... The way we're going to do this is we're going to create a frame, and that's the wrong docking port. I need this docking port. Just a little bit of screen up above it, and then we're going to build a frame around the... There we go. Around where the rover is going to be. Uh, and I want, I want three of these here. I'm actually going to rotate all the pieces. There we go. And then we'll do this. And now it's time for the actual rover. So we're going to use these small docking ports to connect the rover to the rocket itself. That way it's not flopping around all over the place when we try to get it into space. We're going to put a solar panel on it because of course we are. And then we are going to put this little bit of structural pieces. We need to go back to basics to find the rover wheels. There we are. And for electrical, we're going to put a battery on it, just a small battery. And there's our little rover. So now we can go back to basic, and we're going to grab, grab a couple of these RCS thrusters here. Just like that. And then we can rotate back to normal here. Um, 
I believe that should be everything we need for our rover. Now we just need to, oh, we need to finish the frame here. That's right. So let's go back to utility. We'll grab the final piece of our frame. We need to move the RCS thrusters up one because I miscounted. And then we need another docking ring. So we're going to put this one facing down just like this. And then we are going to go ahead and um, start enclosing this thing. Now, we need another probe core here, and we're going to put another rock docking ring. Remember, if you're on vanilla, you only have the small docking rings, so use those instead of the big docking rings. Um, we're going to go back to the basic. We're going to put a rocket together just like this, and then... Hmm. I think that's going to be it. So we will put a separator. Now, because there's no fairing up above the um, probe core on this one, because you can't attach a separator to the... Um, well, I, I'll show you guys. If I bring a separator down and just lock it on here, see how it's not actually connecting to anything here? I think I'd have to... I don't know. It won't connect to anything at all. I'd have to rotate it, wouldn't I? Yeah, I'd have to, like, rotate it because it only wants to connect in line like that. So, I'm using docking rings to connect the launch stage to the actual rover and its cage. Because the launch stage, everything from the... from, you know, this probe core down will not actually be there. Uh, so, we don't we don't need it. We aren't going to want to keep it. So we're just going to put a lift stage like that. Now we need to go and put our fairing on this. And the easiest way with fairings that I find is you see, see the little nubs at the bottom of the fairing. What you want to do is you want to put those over a separator. And that will lock the fairing in place and make sure that it can't like slide down and blow up when you're when you're trying to do something to these rockets so always always put those little nubs around the separator another way you can actually do it is by using like little blocks or something if you put the little blocks um if i go back to utility real quick say you can't quite put the separator like if i i do something like this and i have to have the separator below it i can take and put little blocks here to actually lock the fairing into the separator but um, basically when you do that when you use the separator those blocks go flying and they can actually damage things so that's not really the best way to do it if you don't have to just lock your separator into the fairing um, and now I guess we're we're done with this. We're going to go to our build st uh, our build stage, our launch stage. We're going to put a primary launch stage here. Um, do we want two stacks? Do we need two stacks? I'm going to go with two stacks just to be safe. I think that's going to be a little overkill for what we really have here, but you know that'll be. That'll be good. This will definitely get into space. It'll definitely have enough fuel to make it where it needs to go. And then, uh, ooh, thinking about this, we don't have any RCS thrusters down low on this thing. Um, so without those RCS thrusters down low, it's not going to want to... No, that's fine. That's fine. We can we can make this work. We're just going to have to be careful about rotation when we go through and connect this thing in. So we're going to launch this. Here we are, our ugly little rocket. I think it's got everything it needs, though. So we'll turn our thrusters on, turn our engine on, and we're going to... Oh, uh, really, 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 Heather, I'm recording. You know this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, my wife texted me. I have no idea what she wants. She wants new phones. I don't want a new phone. I, I like my new phone. I like my current phone. Um, <laughs> I hope she doesn't keep interrupting me. She knows I'm recording here. All right, so we're actually going to wait this time. We're going to launch our rocket, 
So probably just a little bit further. So like like right right about here. Because if we launch right now, we should be very close to actually intersecting this thing when we get up to full speed and get circularized. So we'll launch and we will you know do our rotation like normal, do our rotation to 45 degrees um, once we hit 2,000 meters. So right about right about here. This is probably pretty good right there. And then how are we coming? Ooh. That's way behind me. Hmm. Have to be careful here. Now, because we've got that little, uh, because we've got the probe core for the rover there, it's going to angle our cursor and we're gonna have, or, or our uh, indicator there, and we're gonna have to be pretty careful. Um, let's set this as our target right now. I think we're gonna be farther. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to 47 and we're gonna go pretty much perpendicular and we're gonna boost ourselves perpendicular to the planet once we get out of the atmosphere. That will widen our um, trajectory without really giving us too much height. And then if we do this right, what we can do is we can arc ourselves up over the the last stage that we just launched and if we arc over it we can hit it on the way down we can actually let it pass under us and let it gain a little speed in relation to us so we're gonna we're gonna aim for that right now though we need to go through and separate ourselves boom 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 engine on I said, and Janon, there we go. And this is pretty good. We're gaining a little tiny bit of height, but that's okay. We're actually doing pretty good about circularizing on this. I don't think we're getting really close at all. Uh-oh. Okay, there it is. I don't know why it changed our closest approach on us, but it did. Um, so we can just barely let this thing pass over us or pass under us something like this we actually might have launched well we definitely launched too soon at this point we're gonna let our periapsis keep rising 40 or, or apoapsis that's 52.2 so we'll go up to apoapsis here and then we will finish the circularization burn at apoapsis or pretty close to apoapsis so right about right about here it's good there we are all right move to apoapsis again this time i'm going to lower my thrust a little bit perfect all right check our apoapsis we're at 39 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to raise it to like 52 also so let's go down to like 10%, 50. So that's probably pretty close right there. That's 52 by 51.2. And we're going to follow this. And what's going to happen is that other stage is going to slowly catch up to us. I'll just go around a couple. Whoa. Well then. Uh, because, of, wow. That was a complete and utter failure on my part. Because I was stupid and hit the wrong button now now that other stage is ahead of us oh boy oop i'm going the wrong way here because my arrow doesn't point right that's fine though that's fine we got this uh what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to lower our periapsis yeah and separate the stage so if I lower this periapsis until we're in the atmosphere here, something like this, down b below 25, then I'm going to separate this, and now I'm going to make sure that engine is on. That will slowly deorbit itself. This will allow us to catch up to that other rocket and then we can burn to move ourselves into the correct um, 
location with it afterwards. Let's, not that one, this one, follow this one. There we go. So here we are, we're starting to catch up. Now we're gonna burn prograde here to actually reorbit ourselves. Change our periapsis. Something like this. I know my apoapsis is way, way too far out, but that's okay. We will fix it. We'll fix it on our periapsis just like this because that's going to be the best way to do it. We're going to get the most efficient use of our fuel at the periapsis. And we're going to lower it to uh, how about 50, 40. Eight. Let's go with like 48, because we're going to catch up pretty quick where we're so uh, low on this thing. We might actually have to like slow ourselves down or something too here. Why did it unfollow me? Please follow me. Thank you. Yeah, see how fast we're catching up to this thing. All right. So we're going to burn. What we're going to do is we're going to burn radial out. And that's going to change our trajectory here so that we bump into this thing a lot sooner. And this isn't as efficient, but doing this now will make it so we don't have to use as much fuel later. How bad is our orbit? Our orbit is pretty messed up here. <laughs> uh, so let's get ready to burn radial in to reset our orbit once we get really close to this thing. So radial in is going to be this way where my arrow's screwed up. Alright, so we're really, really close to it right now, so let's burn radial in now. That'll put our orbit back about where it's supposed to be. So something like that. How bad's the other side? The other side's 21 kilometers, so since we're just about at apoapsis, we can wait till apoapsis, and then we can fix the other side of our orbit. So right about, right about here, we're going to burn real quick just to put our, ap our periapsis up to like 48 also. 40, 43 is probably, probably good. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's probably good. That's probably good. We're really close to this thing, so be careful with the time warp, because that's what caused my problem in the first place here. All right. There we go. I'm going to burn again here to get myself lined up with this thing. There we are. All right, and here we are. We should be able to see it now. Yeah, right there on the right. So what I'm going to do is turn my RCS thrusters on, and I'm going to use the use the RCS thrusters to appropriately angle myself, and then I can burn. There we go. Burn. Um, with my main thruster in order to very quickly change how I'm moving in relation to that other module. Ooh, we're going to run out of power here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to turn these rover wheels off. Okay, good. So, here we are. There we go. Um, so now we are on a pretty good course to hit this thing. At least get close. How's our orbit looking? Our orbit's pretty well fixed here now. Uh, and that's from just basically spinning around in the orbit to actually, you know, make contact with the craft. In a pinch, if you fail, like I did at getting a nice circularized orbit, <laughs> you can use that to recover. It, I'm going to say it was intentional so I could show it off, where you you know rotate around and use your main thruster to push yourself towards the other ship. Yeah, that's it. Um, and yeah, we're basically just going to 
do the normal thing with our RCS thrusters here to go through and go through and please make contact with this thing. We're almost there, so we probably want to start slowing down now. We're actually almost in the right orientation too, so that's that's decent. So we're going to go to the right. That should slow our sideways momentum relative to that, and then we can just wait, and pretty soon we'll line it up. So, right about here, a little bit more right momentum. There we are, we're pretty close. So what I'm going to do is try very hard to actually cancel out our relative momentum here. It's not quite perfect, but it works. Then what we're going to do is we're going to switch to this and we're going to release this other piece. All right, and we can come over here and switch switch back. I got I oh, I even got the right one first try. That's awesome. Sometimes it's a pain to actually try and get uh, the correct rocket here. So, there we go. Now we're back on a collision course. Collision course is such a bad way to put that with this thing. Um, if we were smart, we probably would have rotated it so that we're lined up with it and uh, don't have to constantly be boosting at the angle, but, well, that would be, that would make sense, and we can't have that. We have to do this the hardest possible way so I can show it off and say, hey, look what I did, right? We just gotta wait till we're close and then we can sort of boost ourselves again. Now, since our um, thrusters are not like centered around our center of mass, the RCS thrusters that is, it's actually gonna impart a rotational force on us every time we use it. And uh, for the most part with RCS thrusters that's not going to be that bad because they will boost you know the opposite way there to try and keep themselves keep you pointing in the right direction basically. Oop, I bumped it but I didn't connect. There we go now we're connected. Alright let's check our orbit. 50.1 by 49.9. All right. So, where's we are pointed perfectly towards our uh, prograde marker. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my solar panels here to just recharge the system. I'm going to go ahead and boost at like 1% or something like that. And that should raise our periapsis. Ooh, no, it's not. It's it's affecting our apoapsis, isn't it? Hmm. So let's burn radial in. That should change our apoapsis here. And our periapsis, it'll rotate them around. 52. Oh, I'm burning the wrong way. Okay. There we go. Radial out. There we Yeah, this is the right way. So 49.9, 50. There's our periapsis at 50. Now we can head retrograde here, accelerate through time until we get to our periapsis, which is right here, and then we can burn really quickly to just lower our apoapsis back to 50. All right, now we're set. Our battery's charging. The last thing we want to do here is go through and switch to this bit of debris. All right, we want to turn this thing retrograde, we just want to burn. We want to zoom out real quick, though, um, to make sure that... See see how our rocket's over on the left there, the part we want to keep? We just want to make sure that we aren't going to smash into it when we do our retrograde burn to deorbit ourselves here. So there we are. Retrograde burn. What is that? That's... Oh, that's... What is this? I don't know what this is. All right, so this rocket's done. Let's switch to this and see what this is. This is, oh, it's that little bit of junk that 
hasn't de oh it hasn't deorbited itself because we aren't close enough to it. So let's fast forward time to um, also deorbit this one's. That other module's crashing. Good. So this module, since we stuck it in the atmosphere at about 25 kilometers, once we enter the atmosphere with it, it's going to slowly engine brake. And we're at 51. Please go around again. There we go. We can't be. There we are. See how it. See how we're in the atmosphere and it's slowly losing its apoapsis. We cannot be in fast forward and we have to actually have the rocket activated in order for it to go through and um, apply the physics correctly to it for it to deorbit. But we can just uh, let's try speeding up a little bit. We'll go right to the periapsis. 26. Mm. Okay. There we are. We're going again. <laughs> We're slowing down. The periapsis is switching. So we're just going to have to wait here for a second. And we're going to deorbit this. But uh, that's it for this episode. And the next time when we return, we are going to do part two of our multi-launch rocket system that's going to the moon for research purposes only. And uh, yeah, we'll do one last launch. We'll get the, the final main mover stage for that rocket going. And then we will end up um, launching to the moon. So thank you all so much for watching. My name's Zira, and this is the Nocturnal Gaming Network, bringing you Spaceflight Simulator. Have yourselves a wonderful night, everybody.